So this is the history of wallpaper in Britain. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I'll 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 talk and draw. At the same time. <laughs> My name is Karen Prothero and I'm the archivist here at Style Library um, and we're here in a very special room at Style Library HQ. This is the design archive. Here we've got over 50,000 uh, different items, different documents, textiles and wallpapers and my job here is to look after the collections to make sure they stay safe for the future and also um, to work with the design teams uh, to understand the historic material when they're looking at creating new collections. So the history of wallpaper in Britain really um, begins in the 17th century, though there are earlier examples of uh, papers found um, elsewhere, particularly in Germany and in the Netherlands um, in the 16th century. Uh, the very earliest papers were not um, were were not really produced as papers for walls. They were kind of multi-purpose papers. So the earliest prints were small, um, regular sized papers, sometimes called dominoes, and they could be used to line boxes. Um, they could be used to decorate walls and also to line books. So really it was the business of the stationers to produce the very earliest papers. They were very simple, often produced by stencils um, rather than a printing process. And um, that eventually became something that became more and more fashionable in the 18th century. Um, and that's when you had uh, pieces of paper joined together and printed on, and that's when you get the first proper wallpaper repeat. The manufacturing process of wallpaper has, um, is almost as interesting, the sort of changing technologies involved are almost as interesting as the designs on the wallpaper themselves. The very earliest paint, uh, papers were stenciled or block printed because that's the most immediate sort of process. Um, and that was pretty much that, that that did endure until the introduction of machine printing and the first machine printing was done by a firm called Potters of Darwin in the 1840s. And block printing um, was a great method because actually it was completely versatile so you could uh, have a pattern as large as you wanted it using as many blocks as you could afford to pay for. Um, but it is quite an expensive printing process because you can only print one colour a day. Machine printing allowed you to print more than one colour in quick succession. So as, long, as soon as the technology was created that would allow it to dry and print without smudging, machine printing became the way that paper was printed. So here you can see how print, uh, wallpaper was block printed and as you can see it takes quite a lot of space but the actual equipment itself is quite rudimentary. Block printing is a little bit like potato printing really, just a lot more sophisticated. Um, but you can only print one colour a day so this hanging mechanism here, this is where the paper was printed and then it was hung up to dry and the next day it would be unrolled and then it would be reprinted with the second colour. This is my favourite Morris & Co wallpaper. It's a very early one. It's called Fruit. Um, and I, it's, it, there are so many different reasons why I love it, really. But um, it has this beautiful, rich, um, chalky, Victorian colouring. Um, it's a wonderful blue that doesn't appear very often in Morris's paper, so it's quite unusual. But I love the surface um, quality that's created by the block print, the way that the uh, oranges and the lemons have been so they have a kind of three-dimensional quality that really shows off the, the, the ability of the block maker to create a, a really good mark that allows this kind of shading effect. And I, I just think it's both a very Victorian paper but also a really modern paper. Um, its colouring and its surface quality and its design I think would be dramatic but very easy to live with now. Mm -hmm. 